Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm really excited to do this video because I've had really a lot of feedback and a lot of comments and a lot of views on my first idle video and I'm going to take a stab at that today and do an advanced idle video. Um, really the last one, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I, I've I've gotten even better at it. Um, continual improvement is kind of my thing and, and I always want to be better at something. So uh, I've continued to work on it on my own car. I've applied some of the things that I learned on my own car to uh, some customer cars. They've had good success as well. Um, so what it really all comes down to is I understand better now what the Holly is trying to do, what it's capable of doing, what it can't do, etc. And um, those things, I'm kind of back to harping on this whole thing of understanding what you got so you can think through better ways to use it. Um, but that's honestly what it comes down to, right? That's that's tuning for you. So let's just talk real quick about what the Holly can and can't do, um, along with what it thinks that it's trying to do or what it wants to do. The way that the, the way in which Holly sees idle. Okay. Um, step one is timing. Step two is air. That's the the two knobs that you have to turn. They're I, I call them one and two, but they're they're really equal and the way i like to think of it is that timing is your fast uh response and air is your i don't want to call it slow response but that is your um your your baseline right that's that's the 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 floor in which you need to try to manage so that your timing can inside of that little air window that you're controlling your timing can can handle the the hips and dips okay so uh, I'll, I'll start with air in the sense that obviously when you fire the car up cold, you're going to need um, some help with adding additional air in order to warm the car up. And that will increase idle speed along with increasing your ability to start a flame in the combustion chamber. Um, so that's your idle air control valve, right? That is what it is. That's what it's for. Um, it's not really, I, re I really wish that it was called uh, warm up air rather than idle air because if you really get it right, you shouldn't be adding extra air in order to idle. Your base airflow amount should be set by where the throttle is at, and the idle air control valve should only be adding air, not adding and subtracting. Um, and the reason I say that is because it, think about it in terms of a carburetor, right? A carburetor doesn't have any control over the amount of air going in, in to the engine other than your foot. So why is it that on a carburetor you can let go of the throttle and it come right back to idle just fine, but on EFI cars if you do that it stalls? Well the answer to that question is you don't have enough air to start with if it's stalling. Now yeah, there's some things that we can do to, to smooth that handoff where it doesn't try to dip too low and and we'll work on that in this video. but. The main thing there is getting enough air to start with. So for Holly, the way that they see things is that your idle should be at less than 3% TPS. I prefer 0 to 1%. That way, if it floats a little bit, you don't ever get into normal running conditions outside of idle parameters. But if you are 0 to 1%, that's going to be established as idle and the ECU will try to run idle parameters at that point. Holly has control over eight degrees of timing either way. So the way that I want to pull this off, and I'll explain this while we actually have the laptop out, is I want the car to uh, kind of fast idle just a little bit um, with the base timing in it. You'll see in the video, like say we got 20 degrees of timing at idle, and if my target is a thousand I want to be averaging about 1050 um, somewhere in there because what I want the ECU to do is once we reach those idle conditions I want it to just ever so slowly drag back down with timing about four or five degrees to hit the target amount and what that's going to do is it's going to return to idle every time you're I mean it's going to be super easy to get the thing to always when you let your foot off the throttle whether you are uh, coming from 7,000 RPM or 1,500, you're going to know that it's going to rock solid land right at 1,000 every single time. So anyway, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the laptop out and continue talking about some of these different things. Uh, I've done, you know, the, the first idle video that I would suggest that you watch. Uh, it's called How to Get a Perfect Drive-By-Wire Idle. Um, these methods still apply to uh, an IAC motor like you would have on an older style throttle body, not necessarily drive-by-wire. The differences are on the IAC motor, it's going to be slower to respond. But again, we talked about that already. You don't need to, you don't really need to have IAC in it anyway. You want to be at zero when you're warmed up. But we're going to be able to adjust where the throttle blade is effectively at base with the ECU when we're doing drive by wire. And you got to do it with a screwdriver when you're using the regular old, uh, you know, mechanical throttle bodies. So I'm going to get out the laptop. Here's your last little nugget. This is something I didn't even know up front, uh, but I figured out is that every 10% IAC with a drive by wire throttle body equals 1% TPS on the blade, not the pedal on the blade. Um, so just keep that in mind. It might actually help you a little bit. Like if you see that your car wants to, uh, return from say starting at 20% TPS and it settles in at 18 or say it's 18 and settles at 16. Well, you know, you need to add 20% IAC then that's 2% that it wanted to, to settle. So, uh, we'll, we'll cover that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the laptop out and get the car fired up and, uh, maybe work on a little bit of, uh, positioning here of the camera and we'll get started. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and get linked up to the car here, and I will basically show you guys what I got set going on right now, and we'll talk about a couple things, then I'm going to fire it up and warm it up and show you what I do. So, idle ICF. Um, real quick, make sure you pick a reasonable idle speed. Um, I, I'm actually pretty aggressive here with, with, these, with the camshaft that's in this thing, but you don't have to idle the thing at 600. Um, it can it can be a little faster than that. It's no no big deal. Uh, for me, I really like the way the thing sounds at, at a commanded 950. It it really hovers about 950 to 1000, and and that's that's really what I want. Um, first off, let's talk about IAC. Um, I'll show you this as it's running, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this pedal versus throttle, like I showed you in the first video, to get this bottom number here to where IAC is basically at zero in, in idle. Um, this is going to be a little bit wonky for the automatic guys. Obviously, this thing's stick shift that I'm working on right now. And it's really important just to note that on a stick shift car, you really, you really want it to idle at about zero, right? Because there's going to be a situation where um, you got... You're coming from 7,000, you're coming from 2,000, you're coming from 4,000, you're coming off, you know, just off idle, return to idle, and you want the thing to be very stable, where in an automatic, it kind of does more of the same thing every time, so it's kind of going to be a little easier for the ECU to, to repeat whatever settings you end up doing. Um, but basically, we're going to adjust this value in order to get IAC right at zero. And I, I want to say right at zero, because obviously you can go effectively under zero but what that's going to end up doing is you'll notice that if your commanded timing is 20 and you have 12 degrees in it and the headers are glowing red then what that's telling you is you got too much air it's trying its hardest to pull the idle down and it can't get it low enough so it's, it's got a t bunch of timing yanked out of it um, 12 degrees probably actually won't glow headers but uh, 5 degrees would I've definitely seen that um, so just to keep that in mind you're going to see this these settings here, and you're going to go IAC hold position at 7. That dude is crazy. And I promise, I'm not crazy. RPM above idle start ramps, 200. I promise, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, the normal Holly settings, right, the ones that you get from, from them are going to be 40 in this cell, 5, 1,000, and I believe it's a hundred. It might be fifty. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, but what's what's important to note here is that uh, there's a condition that happens. I'll I'll see if I can make it happen for you guys here in a second. That um, it, it's kind of funny. I, I get asked this a lot. My car won't return to idle. I don't know what's wrong. Um, for some reason, it if I if I 
zing it, it holds RPM at 2,000, and then I got to like drag the clutch to get it to pull down. And if I do that, it'll idle fine. The way that the hold position works is whatever you put in here, your IAC is going to go to that place whenever you're above 2% TPS and you're out of the throttle. And what that means is if you run the thing up to 5,000 RPM and your RPM above idle to start ramp is at 200 RPM, then until you reach, in my case, let's say I have a 1,000 RPM target idle, until you reach 1,200 RPM, it's not going to ramp the IAC out. The decay time is how long it takes to pull that out. So the problem is, if you, this value right here is sufficient enough to hold the engine above the RPM above idle to start ramp, then you're going to end up with a situation where um, it never returns to idle, right? There's two ways to fix that. The first way to fix that is to lower this hold position as long as it doesn't cause a stall. The other way to fix that is to uh, raise this idle to start ramp, above idle to start ramp. But that again is kind of a band-aid. If you get this just right, it'll be seamless. The handoff will be awesome. So let's go ahead and just dive into this. Um, the first thing that I always do, so really the third round of tuning, round one is to fire it up and make it idle at some value. It doesn't really matter if it idles good. It just needs to idle so that we can start the, the process of figuring out our air fuel ratio at warm up. But really you need to be doing this once you've got your fuel table dialed in really good and you've got your spark table dialed in really good. And you'll notice here, this is kind of a trick that I use too. I'll put this little timing wall right here in below where my target idle speed is because what I want it to do is if it does ever dip for some reason, I want it to really quickly ramp some timing in. So the combination of uh, the idle ICF ramping timing in and my timing table ramping timing in gives it the ability to try to catch a stall. Um, Yes, this is my timing table. This is probably one of the few times I've ever showed it. Um, please be careful with this kind of information. Don't just go jam my timing table in your car and think that it's going to be the best thing ever. Uh, that's not how it works. Um, I'm idling this thing at 20 degrees. I've been at 7. I've been at 15. I've been at 10. I've been at 18. I've been at wherever. I'll be honest with you. This car really just doesn't care. Um, it's got a lot of camshaft in it, and it just needs something to run, but... What I have found is that my method works really well. If I want to idle at 15 degrees, I'll put about 20 in it and then play with the throttle settings to get it to work just right. Um, and we're, gonna, we're getting ready to cover all that. So what I'll do is I will fire the car up and just watch where the IAC do, goes throughout the whole warm-up process based on coolant temperature and watch where it settles, right? And you can drive the car around. You can do all. You, you can you can get the thing fully up to temperature, and then and then at the end of a drive cycle, we could do the same thing and observe where the IAC is actually at. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up, and I'll I'll show you kind of a general idea of how it's supposed to work. We should have some IAC percentage whenever the car is um, quote unquote cold, right? Because that we're adding air to help the thing warm up and fast idle. So let's go ahead and start the car. Hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. I'm going to switch to idle tuning here. So right now we got 55-ish percent IAC and target idle speed is 1113 because of this table right here. So based on coolant temperature, this is where we've got our target idle speed coming from. And you'll notice it's already kind of like working its way down just a little bit as our coolant temperature starts to come up, which is right here, 89 degrees. So we'll walk this down a little bit, let the car warm up, and I will uh, get back with you guys to show you kinda what we're gonna do once it settles. I do want to just go ahead and point something out real quick that right here in my throttle position table I've got about I've got about 10% TPS commanded at 0% pedal and if you look at the IAC it's at 50% so 50% if there's 10% TPS per or sorry if there's 10% IAC per 1% TPS 
I've got 10 in the pedal and I've got another five here in IAC. Oh, look at that. TPS is at 15% right now. Works perfect. It's amazing what you can figure out whenever you just know how the thing works. Okay. We're up to 163 degrees F. My IAC's gonna continue to come down here, you know, as I, as I talk. I, this thing runs typically about 185 or so. Um, but it's close enough that we can go ahead and just start the conversation here, what's going on. Um, so once you've got it established, once you've got it where your IAC is basically zero, or for the auto guides, it's a couple percent when you're in gear. Um, once you've got that set using your pedal versus throttle table, go ahead and just quote unquote lock in your mind. Just, just let's leave that alone for a second. So what you can do now to figure out what your IAC hold position should be is ask yourself where do you want the idle to return to basically while you're cruising down the road. And I usually want that to be 100 or 200 RPM more than whatever my actual intended idle is going to be. And what this is going to do is it's going to let the, the engine come down to that idle and catch itself. And then we're going to slowly, and I, I say slowly, but it's still, if you do it just right, it can be seamless. It's going to walk the idle down from that point to the position that you want it to be in. So what I'll do to figure out what that number needs to be is go in here to my idle speed and I say all right well instead of 950 let's say I want this thing to go to 1050 or actually let's do 1100 for for the sake of the video okay so if I command 1100 and I don't adjust the, the, the throttle pedal table then I can see that this IAC position is hovering around 15 percent or so 16% so what I would do there is go back I'm going to change this back to 950 and it'll walk itself down it, it it's fairly reactive so it takes a little while to, to get down um, but what it'll do and is tell me what the value right here should be now you guys know that I've worked on this thing and got it down to 7, uh, but for the sake of video, let's just put 15 in here. So what you'll notice is that if I go to a TPS value, or really a pedal position value, that is above 2%, watch this thing. It's going to go to 15% and lock. I can run the pedal either direction, and it holds 15%, just like that. Now if I let out of the pedal, it's going to drop down. It's going to hit 200 RPM above the idle start ramp, which in this case would be 1150. And then it's going to pull that 15% out until it reaches the target idle. And you'll notice too that my ignition timing here is bouncing all over what I have set in the table here. That is all set by this idle spark right here. P term and D term are, are your PID controls. and uh, I've done a PID video, but basically the short version is uh, the P is the throttle, the D is the brake. So if you have a bunch of P term and no D term, then you're going to be taking really big swings. And if you have a ton of D term but no P term, then it's uh, actually it's not going to do a whole lot. But if it ever did do a whole lot, it could oscillate out of control. Um, I like to be somewhere in the middle. I like the D term to be a little less than the P term in most cases unless you have something that's very reactive to timing which you would probably need to adjust on that so you guys can probably see here as my coolant temp comes up 174 here my IAC position is getting really low yeah and that's really what we want we want to see that come down I'm gonna move this whole position back to 7 because like I said I have exhaustively worked on this to try to get it just right and I, and I love where it was so let me show you real quick um, I'll show you the, the condition that happens whenever you get the hanging idle, right? So my RPM above idle to start ramp is 200, and let's just let's use Holly's. Let's put 40% in here. I bet this is going to be awesome. So I'm going to rev it up and let it go. Look at it. It's just going to hold 1,200 RPM. 
it's never going to come down to idle. And the reason it's not going to come down to idle is because, look, it's holding 40%, and we are above the RPM, above idle to start ramp. Watch this. If I put 1,000 in here, oh, all of a sudden, she's going to run right back down to idle. So that's what happens. If you ever have a, an IAC hold position, and, and I will tell you this, something I find that happens a lot is that the Holly settings of 40 and 1,000 will typically, if you get the IAC down to zero where it really should be, it'll typically cause you to have a hung idle. So what I really like to do here is, is just be really careful with this because if you put 200 RPM in here, you might end up in a situation where you could want to, um, to dip or stall. Uh, in my case, it works really well. If you find yourself with a dip or a stall, the two things that you can do is raise the RPM of a vital to start ramp a little bit and raise your hold position a little bit. You can slow the decay time by raising that value as well. But what that will tend to cause you to have is kind of a slow, lazy return to idle. So if I put it 40% in here and if I put uh, 500 RPM in here and five seconds, what? Watch the return to idle here. See how slow that is getting back to idle? All right, now watch it whenever we do it the way that uh, I've got f configured here. Rock solid, perfect handoff. So what I would suggest to you guys to do is a couple of things. Obviously get your tune settled first. Your timing should be right, your fuel should be right. Get your IAC to where it's very near zero, in the, in the couple percent range, um, one, two, three range. Uh, and, and where basically you're gonna end up idling the thing, pulling just a little bit of timing with your idle spark. The next thing that's gonna happen is you need to go in adjust your target idle speed so you can see what you want your hold to be and then make sure that your RPM above idle to start ramp is above where the engine is going to go when it's on the hold. You can then adjust this ramp decay time in order to get that handoff to be just perfect. Uh, RPM above idle to re-enable idle control, uh, I just want to touch on this real quick. Uh, I found that to be fairly insensitive, but what that does is it's not going to start doing IAC auto adjustments and it's not going to do idle spark until I reach a thousand RPM. And the reason that that's kind of important is you don't want it to like, you don't want this to be 200 as well because then it instantly is going to start trying to adjust the idle and it's probably going to pull too much or either not do enough. Um, so I'll, I'll usually run that 50, 100, it, it really doesn't matter, 125. I would say that that needs to be a small percentage though, 25% or less of your RPM above idle start ramp if you can do that. Uh, guys, these, these settings that I have here are pretty aggressive. I wanna, I wanna stress that. If you need more RPM above idle start ramp, let me show you something here. Let's say that I put 350 in here and 10%. Watch my return. I'd say it's just as good. You don't really need to be as aggressive as I am with those settings in order for it to work. I just wanted to show you um, how low you can go and how you can get it to work. All right, guys, uh, that's going to be our call it advanced idle settings. Um, I'm kind of off the kick of doing a bunch of uh, stuff with the advanced tables trying to make the idle things work. Holly knows what they're doing here. They've got it figured out. You just got to know how to use their stuff. Uh, one last little thought I want to hit here is... Um, AC. Let's say you got AC on like I have right now because I'm hot and I'm lazy. Um, basic IO, you, you can put your IAC kick in here at, at 25%. Um, so I'm going to turn my AC off and I'm going to set this to zero. And I'm going to link back up to the car, send it to the ECU. Can't do this, can't do the basic IO adjustment stuff whenever you're uh, linked to the car. Okay. All right, so my IAC position is now zero. Uh, I should have been doing more of the video with the AC off to explain this, but my IAC position is now zero. Um, you'll notice I'm hovering around 15, 18 degrees in a lot of times. 
That's exactly where I want it to be. But if I turn the AC on, is it going to add any IAC? It's not adding any IAC, but it is adding a lot of timing. So let's give it a little throttle here. Let it try to return. There we go. Okay, so we got some IAC position, 13, 14%. So what that tells me is if I was at zero, and now I need 12, 13, 14% with the AC on, then I need to add about that amount. And here's what else I'm going to tell you. This is not a hot day. What I typically will do is add about double whatever it gives me. And the reason that I do that is because in every case, the worst thing that happens is it has a little bit of a high idle rather than trying to stall. So what I'm going to do, I, you'll notice I had 25% in there before and it wanted 12 or 15. So that's about double. I'm going to go ahead and put my 25% back in. Uh, on a hot day and you got a lot of drag on the AC, you're going to end up having a lot more drag on the engine, which means it could try to drag the thing down. So that's why I added extra. Worst case, it just pulls it out. Okay. Now we're idling at 6 or 7% with the AC on, so it's got a 25% bump, so it's actually pulling some out. Uh, that's up at 174 degrees coolant temp. So if I turn the AC off, you guys will see that it'll shoot to zero. And you notice here too, like I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys can hear my engine or not through this microphone, but turning the AC on and off, it is, it is rock solid here. I just turned it on. You really don't even see it in the tack. All right. Please hit me with questions, guys. I always love talking to you on the uh, comment section. Like, subscribe, all the stuff that I'm supposed to tell you to do. And I hope that this really helps somebody out. Um, I do want to just hit one last stress point here is that it's really important that your fuel and timing are right before you start going through all this stuff. Because if you tune around a bad situation, it's only going to make things difficult and it's not going to really work right. It's going to get you really frustrated. So uh, hone in on that first and then circle back around and do your idle fine tuning after the fact. All right. Thanks for watching the, uh, the channel and uh, I will see you guys next time.